Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to this guide. Building a bus in Satisfactory used to be a lot of work, which is why I switched to using vehicles instead. However, now we have blueprints with a bit of effort up front, a bus makes your logistical life a lot easier. Early game, building a bus isn't too complicated since all you need to do is stack up some splitters and you're good to go. Blueprints, however, make that a bit easier since you don't have to go through aligning the splitters all the time. And specifically, it makes creating turns to your bus a lot easier since you can pre-align everything. All you need to do is belt them up. It's worth noting that a bus can be pretty resource intensive in the early game, so you might want to build some additional machines producing plates and screws and everything else that you need for your bus. If you're wondering how I'm using blueprints this early in the game, I unlocked blueprints from the start by editing my save game through the website satisfactorycalculator.com. I used the mod at the start of the game to provide free building and then set down a blueprint designer and turned off all the mods again. This doesn't really change the game that much other than making sure you can actually use blueprints from the start. The real goal of the early game is to get to steel as soon as possible as that will allow you to make more sophisticated designs. You should also get access to smart splitters to make your life a lot easier in the long run as those will help getting specific items on and off your bus a lot easier. I recommend starting out with a base design like this. Five lines of belts with the side belts stacking up two or three times depending on how many items you expect to carry in high quantities. The middle belts are intended for final products that you're not making in large quantities so there will be a lot of different items on those single belts. Positioning the belts like this will allow you to easily split off items from the belts without clipping through everything. If clipping doesn't bother you, you can add in a third line of belts on each of the sides and two more in the middle. Now you have this setup, you can start designing your bus. I'm going to assume you want a bus that is raised from the floor, but if you prefer ground-based buses, much of the same process applies. I'll get back to why I think you should use a raised bus in a moment, but for now, let's build the puzzle pieces. First of all, I recommend making and saving the basic belt layout pieces separately. You'll need a straight version as well as one that turns to the left and one that turns to the right. This will allow you to easily snake your bus around the terrain wherever you need it to go. Once you have the basic layout, make the basic pillar design. I recommend this being at least 12 meters high, or in other words, three large foundations. For the straight pieces, it just needs to be three foundations wide, but for the corners, I recommend you use a three by three layout. The reason I suggest making the base layout first is th this will allow you to easily make different types of bus designs in the future, or tweak the ones that you already have. Don't forget to add in some form of power connection to your bus design, as doing this manually later is simply horrible. I recommend putting it somewhere near the bottom so it's easy to reach and connect to it later on. You should also save the 3x3 layout without anything on top separately. Because while these pillar designs will already save you a massive amount of time building your bus, this one will actually make your life a lot easier as well. It's a simple design with a pillar and some thin foundations that will form the core of your bus. Because it is 3x3, three three, you can place this exactly twice between each pillar that does contain belt parts in order to maximize your belt length. This makes it extremely easy to optimize your belt length and make sure that you don't have to count foundations all the time while placing your bus. Moreover, because it's of the same height, it will easily snap on your existing designs. And because you were included on floor, it makes it easier to actually connect up your separate bus pieces. Now, if you want to dress up your bus a bit and make it look more interesting, you can make another puzzle piece that will snap to the top of your bus. Doing this separately ensures that you can vary the looks of your bus whenever you want, but it also allows you to initially build your bus a little bit more resource efficient until you actually have the resources to spare to dress it up. The example I've shown here is a bit more minimalistic design, but you can easily add in things like walkways, hypertubes or even trains. Just remember that the first item you place on top of your bus will need to be placed manually and then after that you should be able to snap everything to that single blueprint once you have the first one down. Now here is a good example to show why I recommend using a raised bus. It makes it a lot easier to pass through obstacles as well as slight elevations in the floor. On top of that, raising your bus makes sure you can still easily get around and leave room for your vehicles if you still want to use them. Speaking of vehicles, using vehicles alongside your bus is actually very efficient once you have fuel on your bus. This allows you to bring in resources that are a bit out of the way without having to build a full belt or bus all the way just for a single node or two. And of course, getting easy fuel to your vehicles makes that a lot easier as well. 
you're probably going to want to combine your bus with an easy way to create central storage locations, as getting things off your belt manually is a bit of a pain. Check out my next video for some suggestions on how to do that efficiently. And if you found this guide useful, please give it a like and subscribe for more content. You are awesome and I hope to catch you in the next one.